Morning everyone. It is Thursday morning and um, we've come together to do our daily Bible reading. The second part of Proverbs chapter 6, starting with verse 16 this morning. Um, just in advance of that, we apology. I've just spotted that our Bible study didn't post last night. So I'm going to get that posted after this live stream. But let's read this together. So it's Proverbs 6, reading from verse 16 to the end. There are six things that the Lord hates, no seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in a family. My son, obey your father's commands and do not neglect your mother's instructions. Keep their words always in your heart, tie them around your neck. When you wake, their counsel will lead you. When you sleep, they will protect you. When you wake up, they will advise you. For their command is a lamp and their instruction is a light. Their corrective discipline is the way of life, is the way to life. It will keep you from the immoral woman, from the smooth tongue of the promiscuous woman. Don't lust for her beauty. Don't let her coy glances seduce you. For a prostitute will bring you to poverty, but sleeping with another man's wife will cost you your life. Can a man scoop a flame into his lap and not have his clothes catch on fire? Can he walk in hot coals and not blister his feet? So it is with the man who sleeps with another man's wife. He who embraces her will not go unpunished. Excuses might be found for a thief who steals because he is starving. But if he is caught, he must pay back seven times what he stole, even if he has to sell everything in his house. But the man who commits adultery is an utter fool, for he destroys himself. He will be wounded and disgraced. His shame will never be erased. For the woman's jealous husband will be furious, and he will have shown no mercy when he takes revenge. He will accept no compensation, nor will he be satisfied with a payoff of any size. Amen. And that's the end of Proverbs chapter 6. Um, probably the, the, the bit that starts at verse 16 um, is the most famous part of, the second most famous part of that proverb. Um, the first part was the ants that we did yesterday. The second is the six, no, seven things that the Lord detests. Haughty eyes, lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, false witness who pours out lie, family, who, a person who sows discord in a family. It's about our, our, how our walk affects other people, how our actions have repercussions, and about how we should um, think about our actions beforehand and how we should um, always act wisely. The bit that comes after that about listening to your father and mother, listening to the people who are older than us, who are wiser than us, who love us and who care for us, and that family model. And it's the same for us with church. You know, we talk about church being a family, but we also talk about that because we talk about God being our heavenly father. The image of father for some people is very difficult. Some people don't have a good image of father. Um, and it's helping folks like that to see that God actually is the perfect father, the one who really does care for us. You know, we see that through Christ who gives up everything for us. Um, but again, it, it, it's, it's about examining our actions. It's about seeing how our actions affect others. Again, an example I used here is, is about um, adultery and having an affair and how it um, affects everybody. Um, again, probably the most vivid part of that is it says, can a man scoop a flame into his lap and not have his clothes catch on fire? Some people think they can do things and, and there's, no, there's, no, there's no price to pay for it, they'll get away with it. Whereas that saying there's always a price, you cannot, as we would say, play with fire. If you play with fire, you will get burnt. Um, and it's about, it's about that, and about being careful. And yes, again, we can take it at face value um, of committing adultery, but we can also apply it to um, our walk with God and keeping our walk with God right. 
So we thought for today, folks, but whatever you're doing when you go out through that door, um, especially at the minute, whenever we're being told to only travel when it's absolutely necessary, tomorrow that comes into legal force, um, people are watching what we are doing. That's why as a, as a church, it's setting the right example uh, of not um, meeting in a, in, a, in a way which disregards people's safety and well-being because people do watch what we're up to. So as you go about your, your, your routine today, whether it's, it's working from home, uh, whether it's working actually out in an essential service, whether it's just out getting a bit of shopping or going around the town, something that you have to do, do it in such a way that your actions bring glory and honour to God. Because that's what it's all about. Let's pause and pray together. Father, again, thank you for another glorious day. Uh, a day whenever we can worship you, a day whenever we can follow you, a, a day whenever we, we go about our lives, Lord, knowing that we are blessed by you. Uh, Lord, maybe that's a hard phrase at the moment to think about being blessed by you in the middle of a pandemic. But Father, you are still with us. You have not left us and despite everything that's going on we know that you're with us and that you're constantly holding us close and we thank you for that. Lord for our family and friends who are in the front line who are working in essential services whatever that may be whether it's working within council services whether it's working within the retail sector whether it's working within health services Lord, whatever that may be and our security services just keep them safe we pray. Be near to them, put your, put your protection around them. Uh, and then as they would come home to us, Lord, we again, we pray for that protection in, in our houses. Um, that nothing would come in that shouldn't come in. That COVID would stay out. Lord, for those who are suffering at this time, be close to them, be near to them. For those who are in hospital, Lord, again, just give them the strength that they need. And be with their loved ones as they worry about them. Lord, help us to realise that our actions reflect upon you and people watch our actions so lord as we go about everything help us to keep our eyes our eyes firmly focused on you now and always in christ's name we pray amen thanks folks i will see you again tomorrow morning same time same place till then take care bye bye